hey, 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 my theories and uh, what I think and uh, believe. Sorry, I didn't want to bring my chair forward. Believe that Resident Evil 2 should be. <laughs> yes. And that is back to standard with the fixed camera angles, but also. in this sort of graphics, the remake graphics maybe add a little extra stuff in mainly the stairs to go to the office where you meet Chief Hines no not Chief Hines, Chief he's not even Chief to meet when you meet Marvin put some stairs in because what's the point in that rampway that goes up to the desk and then you go through the door there's no stairs and then all of a sudden it's the same level yeah it needs to add some stairs in Maybe have the ladders down already in the beginning, because that's what like, it sh it seemed to be. The ladders were down in Dark Side Chronicles, if I remember rightly. Probably not. But he would leave the ladders up if he needed to get to the top. Um, or is it Gmod? I think Gmod had the ladders already down, because there was no actual thing for it. But to be honest, I don't really think the ladders should be left up, but it could be... It could make it too easy to get to the library, so maybe, yeah. Uh, maybe, just to make it a little harder on players, you have to go and find a battery for the emergency ladders. Make it a little bit harder, so coming out of the library, ooh, we can put the um, ladders down and it'll be fine. We can go back down the bottom. Now make it a little bit more difficult. We have to find the battery for the, the ladders. Majority of the time, I never really use the ladder, but it makes it more difficult. They have to like, say, for example, uh, one scenario: you're running back, and then Mr. X is in front of you, and you want a quick escape. You make sure that battery is in that ladder, so you can get down and get out of his way. And um, basically, what would I would like to see because it, it can be possible. As soon as you go down the ladder and start running away, boom, he, he, you know, he jumps down and he, he chases you around. Problem is, yes, that's a safe point down there. But you know, we don't. I think it would be cool just for the one character to jump in there or move the safe point where it should be because I. I didn't see the point of having a save point there and the boxes in another room, so why don't we put the save point in that same room, maybe? Um, but yeah, I definitely want to see that. Um, also, I would like to see, possibly, if they can get it all done in one time, a demo of Remake Nemesis on the actual game. That would be quite cool. Um, also, I'd love to see, but. Capcom never go back on their failed attempts. If they put a full 100% complete Resident Evil 1.5 as a bonus thing at the end, you know, when you can complete the game, you can unlock the what was going to be Resident Evil 2, the Resident now known Resident Evil 1.5. Maybe they should have that. They should have had the Resident Evil 2 prototype 100%. Um, that would be cool. I would pay money to buy that. I would. Don't know if you guys would as well, but I definitely would because I have played the prototype on my PlayStation emulator. It looks good, I just wish it was 100%. I wish it had all the stuff that is necessary. It actually looks, the game actually looks like the trailer, so that makes more sense. The PlayStation is more to what it should be. There's actually a 5 scape in there, which I found in one of my up-to-date versions of the 1.5, so yeah. That shows there are staircases somewhere which is not in Resident Evil 2 itself when it was released. And the problem is Resident Evil 2 was released and it was like 
uh, we didn't know what it was at first, it would just look like a PlayStation, and then all of a sudden in Outbreak File 2 they mentioned that it was an old museum. Now, what PlayStation would buy out an old museum and use it as a PlayStation? Oh, you know, only Resident Evil. Well, Capcom would think that. But to be honest, I I don't remember many many museums that you know that had you know links to get down to Umbrella. I mean, that probably was added later, but I don't really remember a gallery that looked so like the way that it is, unless. When the police, when the Raku City Police Department took over the building, and they made it theirs, it yeah, they made it look a bit weird. But I don't know. I mean, it, you know, to me, I'd, I've never been to very many um, galleries, but I don't remember them gonna be looking like a police station. My microphone's full. I don't know why it keeps doing that. But yeah. Um, <laughs> But from that, I mean, the trailer had a basic police state, uh, Raccoon City police station in front, you can see it, and when you're running on the top of 1.5, you can actually see that front of the police station, and it's like, yeah, this is what was in the trailer. To what we actually got as a full game, did not look anything like the trailer. So, you know, and the thing that was annoying in the trailer was, is that Claire was in the trailer, but, you know the 1.5 police station that was features into the trailer did you know was weird because it was Alza that you played and was not wearing you know in the costume and this girl looked like Claire Redfield so obviously that was Claire Redfield so in some due respect that you might have met Claire Redfield in Resident Evil 2 anyway or Elsa was only thought about at first and then she was replaced with Claire before they decided to completely scrap the Resident Evil 2 prototype. Maybe, I don't know. Or that may be the closest costume they had for Elsa. I don't know. They, they never really mentioned the name of the person in the trailer, but it definitely to me looked like Claire. Um, <coughs> I think George Murray did a really good job of that trailer. <coughs> Rest in peace, Mr. George Romero. Um, as far as I know, um, last information I saw, he he did pass away, which was a shame. Um, he is a good um, horror director. He done all the Dawn of the, uh, Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, Night of the Living Dead, and I thoroughly enjoyed them all. He, I have seen the first draft and the script to the original Resident Evil. I liked it. But it was a bit, hmm, you know, some things could have been tweaked. And uh, I know George Romero would have, you know, tweaked it to the way that Capcom would have wanted it. But Capcom decided we we didn't want it, you know, they wanted to fire him. I mean, they should have given him a chance saying, look, this is what we want. Show him the video game footage and say, look, we want, you know, this. You know, not making Chris Redfield... You know the way he is, and no, Chris. You know the thing was, Chris Redfield and Jill are not a couple; they're just partners in the police station. In the movie and the script that I saw, well, they're saying that Chris Redfield was dating Jill, which I don't think would ever happen, um, because Jill Valentine was married at the time to somebody else called Valentine, and I can't remember the name. Someone might know. It's like, if you look at Jill's. Uh, Origins, it does state that she's married to someone and it's a Valentine and she did have an original surname. But it wasn't Redfield and she was not related to Chris at all, even though I thought they were sisters, but then eventually his sister did appear in Resident Evil 2, which was weird. Um, but yeah, delving deep into this, I thought... You know, I read through the entire first draft of the script that George Romero wrote. I enjoyed it, but as I said, tweaks needed to be made. Um, I got hold of it and I tweaked it to myself. And um, when I looked at it, I thought it was great. Um, unfortunately, it was too late. For, you know, at the time when I got all this script, they've already done the crappy movies by Paul Scott, 
W. Anderson, who I hate to this day because he ruined uh, Resident Evil. And that's why Capcom, I, I don't know if they'll admit it, that's why Capcom decided to make the animation version movies because the movies were terrible. Maybe a lot of you like it. I don't give a damn if you do because I hated their movies. They only did one decent movie and that was the second one because Nemesis was in it. I mean, to me, it was not a Resident Evil movie. It was just action movie with a few Resident Evil characters. Like, the first one had no Resident Evil characters at all on it. Um, if I remember rightly, there was just the Red Queen, which was never mentioned in the games. And the liquor was in it, which was Resident Evil 2. That was it. That was the only thing that tied that movie. I mean, yeah, okay, there's zombies in it, but <laughs> there was zombies in Dawn of the Dead, which, you know, it could have been an action zombie movie. You know, and then they threw a liquor in there, which was to do with Resident Evil 2. So, yeah, and each movie just got more and more different people that had nothing to do with the Resident Evil storyline. But they added Resident Evil characters to it just to keep it Resident Evil, which Capcom was not happy about because it wasn't what they wanted. They should have kept George Romero and said, you know, we want it tweet, and when they would have had a better uh, movie, should we say. Because basically what it was was that it was going to be the first game, uh, a little bit before, but it was going to be the first game in that movie, where at the beginning they were doing a few missions and then they were going to the mansion. And then they were going to go through the mansion and then escape the mansion. That was the whole movie. That was the whole plot that I was seeing. Um, and then all of a sudden it was going to go and lead on to Resident Evil 2. Which would have been like the game and it would have been Nemesis. It would have worked like 1, 2, 3. You know, and then... You know, there would have been going to be <coughs> a Cobra and a Corex, uh, movie. If it would have kind of gone that way. <coughs> but unfortunately it didn't. So we lost out on that. But I will say this. Um, you know. Going back to the crap Resident Evil movies. The second one was the best. Out of all of them. I would say because. Yes you had Nemesis in it. This one was the only one that was. Sort of closest to two Resident Evil games compared to the rest of them because they were rubbish but we had stars officers running around the Raccoon City we had Raccoon City itself we had Umbrella and Mercs running around we had Carlos we had Nikolai who was supposed to be good in it but he's actually bad in the game so it proves that Paul Scott W. Anderson had no idea what he was doing for this movie, he had probably said, oh yeah, I played all the Resident Evil games. Well, if he played all the Resident Evil games, why was Nikhil, the evil one in the game, good in this? I mean, come on, man. You created this film. You supposed to have played the video games. You just saw characters in it and thought, oh, we'll put in it. And who the hell was Yuri? Yuri was nothing to do with Umbrella. If you check the Umbrella Corpse list, there's nobody called Yuri. There's Nikolai, there's Mikhail, there's Carlos. There's a few others. There was Edwards. There was some that one that Carlos had to kill, or Mikhail Nikolai just kills anyway. There was a few others. There was the guy who was glasses. It looked like Devon Dudley. There was there is a list of Umbrella Mercs that you could probably find, but Yuri was not one of them because he was just mentioned in the film because the guy just decided that he couldn't be really bothered to find a, uh, a Russian character that was big enough to fill the shoes of Mikhail. And decided, yeah, we'll have Yuri. That sounds like a good idea. But you know, he dies anyway. He didn't do any good work. You know, they should have built his character because they would have made it good. But yeah, they had Jill. They had Carlos. They had Nikolai, who was good, which ruined the storyline because he wasn't good. He was a bad character. So obviously, he never finished Resident Evil Nemesis to find that out. He must have just seen him. Um, and you had Nemesis. That's it. Four big characters in this movie that makes it Resident Evil. Yeah. And then after that it was just action movies with slap a few Resident Evil characters in. The third one, if I remember, which was um, After Earth, which was when you first meet Claire Redfield. Great. And Carlos is still there. As far as the games were soon, Carlos is 
killed off. He's no longer in it. He left Raccoon City and that was it. And there was nothing talked about him. So in the film they thought, well, we'll keep him going. What's the point if he hasn't got a story after the Nemesis? Maybe, Capcom, you could put um, a story with Carlos. What happened to him? We want to know. What the f- happened to that idiot? I mean... Did he get laid? Did he get AIDS? You know, did he die after having sex with a load of girls? I don't know. We just never hear from him. But we hear from Jill, and she never mentions. Oh, by the way, Carlos is dead. Blah. <laughs> anyway, off that subject. Um, what next? Well, we look at the ones after that. Oh, Jill reappears when this. On to the next one. And Wesker. Wesker was already seen in the third one, I think. He was a hologram in one of them. Uh, and he looked pretty good. Then they changed him up when they actually first uh, properly see him. But I think that was like the next one. And yeah, the guy that got to play him was kind of good, but wasn't the Wesker that we grew up with in the games. But he was good. And then all of a sudden, he's still alive. Even though after Resident Evil 5, he's dead. And they decide into the one after that, when they're in Russia. Why did they go to Russia? Because of Umbrella Chronicles. Um, they bring Barry back. <coughs> and Leon. Barry dies. Sorry for those who haven't watched the um, movies yet, but they should have done. But you don't miss much. They're terrible and crap. I wouldn't even buy them if they were in the pound bin. Uh, and the silly thing is, I'm going to bring it up because it's already apparent. Barry is in Resi Revelations 2. He's still alive. He's looking for his daughter. So what did they go and do in the movie? They go and kill him off, but keep Wesker alive for the rest of it. When he died in Resident Evil 5. Hmm. A lot of people probably say, no, Wesker ain't dead. You know, Capcom has confirmed it on their website. Wesker is dead because a lot of people keep saying he's not dead. I mean, come on, he's in a lava bit. Two rockets exploding into millions of pieces. There is no way he's going to survive that. He's not Nemesis. I mean, I don't even think Nemesis survived that nuclear bomb that blew up. Or that tactical bomb that blew up the entire Raccoon City. All they found was a piece of him. And they used that to make the big monster in Resident Evil 6. Crap. Anyway, um, but after that, yeah, they finally go, right, well, we're not getting any more funding from Resident, uh, from Capcom, we're going to end it. And they made the final chapter, which actually isn't the end, because Alice is still alive, who had nothing to do with the Resident Evil series. They then eventually kill Wesker off, and they found out that Alice was a clone to the original woman, who was a thorn inside of Umbrella, and big reveal, boom, and she kills everything and passes all her memory to her. And then at the end of it, they're supposed to be wiping out the C virus. And Claire's still alive. But Leon has, is missing from all this. Now, where in the F is Leon? He survived the Russian area, and then that. That military base where there is like um, whatever experiments were going on when they were underground in these hollow suites, I'm like gonna call them. He never appeared in the last film. I don't know why. Wesker did. Claire did. Um, but Leon didn't, and yet he was the one still alive. I mean, the idiot in the film decided, you know what? Because Leon was back in Resident Evil Four. You know, he didn't die. He's the main character. Oh, he's got to be still alive. But Resident Evil 5, Wesker dies. But yeah, he's still alive in the films. I'm like, God damn it. But never mind. That's just the way they are. Oh, and obviously in the one on the boat, Chris Redfield appears. Who, no disrespect to the guy who plays him, is not Chris Redfield. He does not look any like Chris Redfield. He is rubbish. Okay, he was good in Dinotopia and that other thing that he done that prison series. But he's not Chris Redfield. Odafera, who played Carlos Oliveira, yeah, he looked more like Chris Redfield than 
anybody, and yet they pay, got into play Carlos. Yeah, kind of didn't really work, but never mind. But anyway, yeah, Resident Evil 2 remake should be the way it should be. But I have a feel I I want it to be classic because it's a remake of a re of the original game. Like Resident Evil Remake One, it had new little stuff in it, new monsters. <coughs> now I did hear there's supposed to be crimson heads in it if you didn't kill the zombies properly because they were so popular in Resident Evil One Remake. So that's going to happen. Then you've got. The ch chance that maybe the crocodile's not going to be in it because they want to put something better. What's better than a crocodile? Maybe the big huge gorillas that were in the original prototype. But still it can't replace the uh, crocodile. That thing or alligator, that thing was awesome and it was shown in Resident Evil 7. A load of them. So you know you've got to have the crocodile back in it. What's the point of a Resident Evil game without him? You know, it's like if they done remake and they removed the snake in the attic because they wanted to put Gregory Trevor's in the game. That would have effing ruined it for everybody. That's why they kept him in it. So this is the problem. The person who done the remake of Resident Evil One should be doing the remake of Resident Evil Two and saying, "Look, we need it to be the same as Resident Evil Two, but with a lot of extras." A lot of different stuff, you know. Maybe make the PlayStation a bit more better. Have a few extra rooms. Maybe some toilets because where the hell do these people go to the toilet in this PlayStation? Apart from the night office, which is locked unless you get the cube key. So you know, unless they got keys to that room, that's the only place they can go to the toilet is the night office. Bloody hell! If you're in office, the other side of the PlayStation. And you got to run all the way over there just to go to loot. You're knackered, basically. <laughs> so, yeah, they need to put some toilet stalls somewhere in the police station. Each part of the wings. There are areas that they could put it. And for a fact, why they got a broken door in, Resident, uh, in the police station? They should really fix that or put the toilets in that bit and close it off. Again, you know, it's a small area, but you can have toilets in there, I think. There are so many areas in the police station that you could had toilets in that should be there. Because you look at the entire map, there are some areas that are just like, well, they could easily put something there, they could easily put something there. Uh, you know. Yeah. They should really think of putting toilets in that police station. Because having one. I mean, what, where were the toilets when, you know, they had to have toilets in there when there was, um, <laughs> you know, a museum, so. Where did they go? But, you know, I think it should be the same. Uh, but I think in the options section, there should be um, camera just settings, which they can do on the PS4 and the PC. Because it can be done. So you can actually choose classic survival horror, which is fixed camera angles. You can choose new style, which is the third person with the camera over the shoulder. Or you can select first person horror. Which I can't think of a name for first person horror apart from first person horror. Because um, you've got classic horror, which is the fixed camera angles, and you've got the new, well, modern uh, classic horror, which will be the f over the camera shoulder. And then the newer f classic, uh, cl newer horror. First person, have that selection in there and play the game as you feel. I know for a fact that I want to play it in fixed camera angles. I wouldn't mind seeing what it's like in first person, seeing that the first person mod for the Resident Evil 2 looks good and looking around the police station, first person looks good. But what's the point if you haven't got you know, a VR headset? Without the VR headset, you're not really getting a good experience. But again, okay, yes, it is a good experience to watch and play around with. But I'd rather it in the original idea, the classic survival horror, you run around the corner and the camera changes and then you're grabbed by a zombie. That's scary then running around the corner and seeing the zombie before you even get there, so it's like, no. Action game, no. <laughs> but, 
you know, a lot of fans do like that because they started with Resident Evil 4 and they think Resident Evil 4 is their best Resident Evil game. So that's why they would mine the, sh- the camera over the shoulder. I don't, I don't hate Resident Evil 4. I get frustrated with it, but I won't say it's my best Resident Evil game. To this day, even if it looks old and if they remake it properly and make it more to remake style and in the same fixed camera angles, Resident Evil Nemesis is still today my favourite Resident Evil game and if they remake it and they do it properly like Resident Evil Remake and have the, uh, the all the new extra areas, new edits things and the, the same fixed camera angles, it will be my new best Resident Evil game if in a remake sense. Because I still love Resident Evil Nemesis, how good it was that you were chased by Nemesis all the time. You never knew when he was going to chase you. You never knew when he was going to give up. And the thing is, he never gave up. Resident Evil 2, yeah, it's not my worst game, but it's second in the list because it was good. It was different. You got to control two different characters. You had four storylines to go through. You also had a bonus mission or two if you can get the... I think... The battle mode was only in the PC release as well as the American release. We never got it over here. But we did get a uh, Force Survivor, which was good. Yeah. <laughs> Considering that Resident Evil 1 did have a bonus, it was battle mode, but for some reason we didn't get battle mode in the power region. Unless you had to save Saturn and you completed it to get it. For some reason the PlayStation 1 version didn't have it and I don't know why, it should have done. And then all of a sudden they, when they made it on the DS they did have the sort of versus battle mode. But you have to have it connect to another DS and it was stupid. <laughs> but, yeah, oh well. Something I'm going to miss out on because I can't do it because I haven't got two DS's unless it connects to the DS emulator to the DS. It's unlikely going to work but uh, that's just one of them. But yeah, what are your views? What would you like to see? Use the towel section in below or the comment section. You know, and say what you think Resident Evil 2 should be. I think there should be options because there's so many fans out there that like different versions of Resident Evil. So I think the option should be there. If you just fix it to one camera, then you piss off your classic fans and you won't get any more money. Because the new fans are not really interested. Um, There's not very many new fans. Because you brought in new fans because of Resident Evil 4. The classic ones just about stayed around because they thought maybe this is just a one off. <coughs> but <laughs> it wasn't. You brought Resident Evil 5 up co op because I have seen the beta. You only played Leon. Uh, no, you didn't. You only played Chris Redfield and you're fighting a load of. Uh, villagers, shall we say, instead of getting racist m- remarks on this channel, they're all in a uh, different colour to us. They thought it would be racist, and I think it did get criticised by, oh, this is racist, you know, Chris Redfield shooting a load of, um, uh, you know, uh, other culture, uh, Africans, uh, yeah, he was shooting a load of Africans, but there's zombies, what do you do? Oh, I can't shoot him because he's African, uh and your dad, you know, sorry, it's survival horror, you can't choose who you shoot. It's like, if they remake them Resident Evil, you know, Resident Evil 2 remake, and this, you know, uh, or they are remaking it, but if they do it, oh, you, you won't be able to kill Marvin unless you had a protagonist with you. It's that bad, it's stupid. Marvin's going to bite you, and you're like, oh, I can't shoot you because... Uh, I don't even know if Marvin's African, but still, you know what I mean? It's like, why is it so bad? Racism is not a thing. It's just, somebody's made it up saying, oh, it's racist to do it. It's not, you know, in survival horror instincts, you know, if everybody turns into zombies, you're not going to stand there because one per, or, uh, you know, Africans are not going to, you know, are going to be immune to zombie infections. Nobody's immune to it, you know? And we're all the same, yeah, maybe different colours, we may speak in different tongues, but we we all have the one same heartbeat. We all live on this planet. So, you know, if a survival horror game is to show how you survive in situations and you have to kill an African, 
fine. You know, what's the problem? So they had to add in Sheva, who was from Africa, to make the racist comments go away and say, yeah, this is better because you've got an African woman helping you, shooting them. It's like, yeah, it's fine. But she was fucking annoying. Every time she picked up an item, here you go, have a handgun bullet. I don't need any. Here you go, have a first aid kit. I don't need it. You know, she was annoying. Filling up spaces when you had a space, so I had to make sure that I had all my inventory covered so she didn't give me anything because she was pissing me off. Oh, uh, and then they made Resident Evil 6. What a huge chunk of sh that was. I hated it. It was like a rip-off of Jurassic Park and Call of Duty. Apart from it wasn't first person. It was like a... Th it, it looked like a third person view of Call of Duty. They just... It's like, okay, they decided, you know, Call of Duty wants to go third person. And they slapped a load of Resident Evil stuff in it. Hey... And they had Jurassic Park scenes. What the hell was the dinosaur to do with when Simmons turned into a bloody dinosaur? I, that was stupid. Or it was Simmons, wasn't it? See, I'm, I hate that game that much. I can't remember everything. But why? Why, Capcom? Why did you make a Resident Evil in Jurassic Park? <laughs> it was stupid. Spanish, well, technically, Dino Crisis is a Resident Evil Jurassic Park in a way, but they weren't zombie dinosaurs, but you were fighting dinosaurs in Dino Crisis, but <laughs> come on Resident Evil 6 shouldn't be anything like Call of Duty to grab Call of Duty fans, it shouldn't be like Jurassic Park to drag Jurassic Park fans in, Resident Evil was survival horror, to keep the survival horror fans with it you know, all you had to do was do what they, you did with Remake and remake some of the older games and continue the story the same. But you decided to go off, of course. And I will have to say, I have modded my Resident Evil 4 and I will try and do a video on it sometime if it will let me record it. Of what Resident Evil 4 looks like in fixed camera angles and I enjoyed it yes the game is not bad it's, it pisses me off but I thoroughly enjoyed it more when I put the fixed camera angle mod on because it made me feel like a kid again that I was starting out playing Resident Evil again you know, and I think a lot of classic fans can agree with me on that that basically the fixed camera angles was the only thing that kept Resident Evil going yeah, okay, a lot of people can argue that the first Resident Evil is possibly going to be in first person. But of the information I found, it basically was going to be a, a sort of, not co-op, but there were two people running were, were with you. You were playing Chris Redfield, and Jill would follow you around. But they decided, mm, the PlayStation can't cope with that. So they decided to have it separate. So you play Chris Redfield and eventually meet a character called Rebecca Chambers. And then you would actually play Jill Valentine. And Barry will now and again appear. That's why in certain rooms Barry would work with you and then he would disappear. Because the PlayStation could not, could not handle having two characters walking together with a different amount of monsters. That's why he doesn't walk with you when the dogs jump through the window because he couldn't control two dogs running in there as well as two characters. It just wouldn't work. That's why some of the hallways only had two zombies, maybe three at best. They don't have a horde of zombies that can remake. In certain areas, there's quite more than one zombie. <laughs> you know. You know. Anyway, other than that, what are your views on it? Comment in the comment section below. I think there should be an option. Jeff Music Man has already said that as well. And I think between me and Jeff, we are the classic fans. But we wouldn't mind seeing what it looks like in another dimension. As well as, you know, the people that like Resident Evil 4 have an option as well. And people that like Resident Evil 7. <coughs> no. We have an option as well. So we have a big variety of options. So they can keep the classic fans entertained and keep them in the project. Keep them... Giving him money to Capcom, stupidly enough. Keep the classic fans happy, keep the newer fans happy by having an option, which is possible. I know it is, and if they f this up and put it as Resident Evil 4, I'm telling you now, Capcom, 
I'm not buying that game. I can guarantee. Well, it, well, the problem is I can say this, but I know a lot of people are going to buy it. I mean, one person not buying it—that's nothing to you. But I can guarantee, once people have bought it, they'll want their money back because it's not Resident. It's not a remake of Resident Evil. It's just a complete mess. It's just Resident Evil Two reborn into something else. It's not a remake. So that's what I'm saying. But guys, if you want to buy it, buy it. But don't ask me to play it on my channel if it's not where I where it, if it's not got the option of changing the camera angles. It can be done. I know it can. Capcom knows it can. Whether they do it or not, if they care about money, as they do about you know, as, as they say they care about their fans which they don't, they care about the money. If they care about the money, they would do this because it will make more money if they have the option of different camera angles. And it can be done because I've done... You know, people can mod PC games. PlayStation 4 is quite capable of today's graphics on the PC. So, it's possible. They can do it. They can have an option for camera changes. It just may be a little delayed but how long have we been waiting for this Resident Evil 2 remake clearly they can do it in this time if, you know and it will keep a load of classic fans which will make your game have more money it will entertain new fans which will give you more money so you don't want to lose your classic fans because you're not listening to us if you know you say you do so Capcom, my advice and words to you are keep the classic gamers of Resident Evil happy and at the same time keep the new gamers of Resident Evil happy by having an option for the, the camera settings so we can have fixed camera angles for us classic Resident Evil fans who have played it for day one and also collaborate and have an option for first person or over the shoulder cam for those newer fans okay see I have a mind for this I know what I want to see in Resident Evil uh, and I know what fans want to see in Resident Evil pardon me <coughs> so if you care about the fans listen to want your fans more especially someone who's played it from day one who has a feeling and knows that this will work and can work if you do it right if I had the money and if I had the technology, I'll remake Resident Evil 2 and do it myself. If you don't want to do it, Capcom. If you don't do it properly. If I had the money and the resources, I'll do it. I can guarantee you, Capcom, people will play my game more than they'll play yours. So please. Because I ain't got the money to do it. I know fans have made their own versions of the game and it looks brilliant. So you can do it. So I'm ploying with you, Capcom, to not lose a great greatest classic fans because you not listened you took forever to do this game and it doesn't look good like with your not a hero DLC you delayed it to be honest what was wrong with it there didn't look like anything wrong and the delay wasn't even worth it should we say because I saw no changes to it and there was nothing new that you know you may have adjustable reason but looking at it what took so long to release it anyway that's my rant over that's my talk over of the Resident Evil 2 re remake and what I'd like to see in it what, and what views are on it thank you guys for watching and we'll catch all you the gaming bro fans in the next one bye